Hey everyone. A couple of days ago I had a difficult airway, but my registrar managed to get a bougie into the airway. Now the problem there was he wasn't able to pass the tube over that bougie. So I thought we'd take the opportunity today to outline all the steps you need to take if your tube simply doesn't go over that bougie. So first of all, it's really important to maintain the same tension on your laryngoscope. So don't ever let that tension down. You want to keep the airway as open and as good a conduit for your tube as possible. So keeping that tension on is really valuable. If you have burp on, you're going to make sure that that's also held, but make sure that your assistant doesn't squeeze the larynx too hard um, or at all, because that will narrow the aperture that your tube is going to pass over. The next step there is often uh, the tube needs to be rotated. And what I do is I rotate the tube counterclockwise. And that ensures that the bevel lines up better with the surface of the bougie. Now, if none of those steps work, sometimes you just need a smaller tube or a different tube. So never be ashamed if you simply can't get an airway. Putting a size 6 tube in is always going to be easier than putting a size 7 or 8 tube in. And that's always a possible backup that you can use. Now, there's another couple of types of tubes which have a far better profile than these, than these ones. What you notice with the tube is that when the bougie is in the airway and you're passing the tube, it's often causing that gap there. When you rotate counterclockwise, it changes that gap and makes the bevel of the ETT really flush with the tube and that allows it to pass without you know, getting caught on the cords. But there's other different tubes called bullet tip tubes um, that you'll find with uh, the fast track LMA kits and Parker tip tubes that are far easier to pass through over a bougie. Those are already form fit against the bougie. I want you to think about this in terms of the difficult airway society guidelines as the context for which you, you know, use these maneuvers. So those guidelines state that the main principles are one, oxygenation, and two, preventing of trauma of the airway, because that's how a can't intubate, can't oxygenate scenario occurs. So I want you to be very clear that if the patient is desaturating, what you need to do then is go simply back to bag masking to oxygenate. And if you can't bag mask, put an LMA in to oxygenate. So you make sure oxygenation is always present. Also, I try to move through these stages really rapidly. I don't persist at a failing task, because the more you try to put, uh, push the tube against the larynx, the more chance you have that you might traumatize the larynx. And that trauma causes swelling, and that swelling can make a difficult airway virtually impossible. So, hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Thanks for listening. Um, please post any comments or questions below, and thanks.